Hi guys, this is Spartan765. Uh, today I'm just doing a video on uh, general information about sawed-off shotguns, um, common myths and safety about sawed-off shotguns. Because I have a sawed-off shotgun video build series out there, and um, Hollywood has skewed the sh sawed-off shotgun to make it believe as it's as simple as literally hack sign off the stock and hack sign off the barrel. There's how they do it in movies, it's not how it's done in real life. If you do that in real life, you'll end up wrecking a gun. Number one, hold on one second, let me just get a part here to better illustrate this. Okay. Now, to better illustrate how a sawed off shotgun is properly made, First one must understand that there is actually parts that need to be purchased in order to properly do a soft shotgun job. Because you got to look at here, the wood stock it was on here like this, see? The screw holding the wood stock on is this long. And this is like this with all firearms, Ithaca's, Mossbergs, Winchester's, Remington's. Came out to here. A new screw has to be purchased. Also, another common myth is people always ask on my video why this is left squared like this. Not so much squared, just thicker in the back part. If you cut this down like that to where it was a, you know, narrower, three things would happen. Number one, your bolt would be sticking out. And number, well, we're going to go into the bolt here with number one. You have to mill a hole down there for the washer with the milling machine in order to get that to work. Um, and buy a shorter bolt, like I said. Okay, like I said, your bolt would stick out. Number two, by removing this here, you jeopardize the strength by 70%. You lose 70% of your pistol grip strength if you cut that down there. Meaning, if you were to fire the shotgun like this, there's a very high possibility that it would just snap right off. Number two, number three, the reason it's, I did smooth this out in the back here and everything like that. Number three, when you're holding the shotgun like this, this here acts as a kind of a, a butt thing to kind of help the shotgun. Because when you fire a shotgun with one hand like this, it's not just going to go back. It's going to want to go like that or like that, sideways. And this here prevents the shotgun from just going like that, you know, when you fire it. As far as preventing it from flying this way, you got your finger here, right here, which will prevent it. That's why this is left like that. And being it left like this is actually more ergonomic and easier to handle. It doesn't look like it is, but believe me, it is. More ergonomic to handle. Um, and much safer, like I said, with the, um, uh, you, you, you retain the strength by keeping it like this. Um, another thing, why is it wrapped in tape? Number one, because there's a big huge hole right here which I filled in with wood putty and that just filled in to, you know, so the tape just doesn't push down where the bolt went in. That's why it's wrapped with tape and also for grip. Okay? Now this here is designed, I made this to, do, to be a true side off shotgun. No make tube extension, no tactical accessories. I may do a drill and tap for the front bead sight but I don't know for sure yet. Here's the old part of the barrel I cut off with the original bead sight. As you can see, yes, I did just cut it off with a hacksaw, and I had to do a lot of filing, leveling, and deburring on the barrel and re-bluing right up here. That is very important that it's level, because if you have the barrel cut off sideways, your shot's going to go, you know, sideways. So you want that level. It doesn't have to be perfect, just level. You know, and you want to deburr it inside so you don't have a rim of shit in there or on the outside. Another thing you want to do is you want to be sure you're not wimpy, because this shotgun, especially if you're shooting double O bucker slugs, this is going to kick two to three times harder than the Desert Eagle. That is no shit. I have shot a Desert Eagle 50 AE before, and they do kick like a motherfucker. I mean, well, not like a motherfucker compared to this, but when you hold this like this, and you shoot a double O buck, and you're not experienced with shooting a sawed off shotgun or a pistol grip shotgun, it's going to go just like that. No shit. And you got to know how to control that, because these do have a big, huge recoil. You gotta keep in mind, you're shooting a bullet that fucking round with that much powder behind it. That's more powder than is in a 50 AE and a bigger bullet that's in a 50 AE, and it's gonna recoil. Okay, the preferred method to shoot a uh, sawed-off shotgun 
there's a few ways. Like this, because then you have control with the grip here, and you got control with the hand. The, the shooting like this method is not advised. I can do it because I know how to control it, but your average noob or new person with side off shotgun should not do that because they could injure themselves or something else. Or like this, down at the hip, that's where a shot, side off shotgun is mainly designed to be shot at, at the hip. Phone's okay. ringing, there we go. Yes, that was rocking the beer guts, my ringtone. I don't have a beer gut, but I used to think the song's funny. Um, yeah, and barrel length, 18.5 inches you want to keep her at. Now, if you want to watch my soft shotgun build series, you can do that. But keep in mind, when you do this, you want to keep this squared at the end, because this does have a lot of strength. If you cut that down, you're going to lose a lot of your strength, just because how the grain of the wood is and everything. You know, if you go cross grain, you're, you lose 70 to 80 percent of the wood strength. Okay, quit calling. Okay. You guys got any comments or questions about safety or anything else like that, you can feel free to send me a message. Part 765 out.